Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No, they that wait on the Lord, he renews their strength. Amen. Everybody say amen. 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 Who wants your strength?
Come on. Hallelujah. Father God, we worship you this morning. We thank you, Father God. We worship your name. We lift your name, Holy. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We just lift your name right now. We lift your holy name. We thank you, Father God, for all the things you have done in our life, in our lives. Thank you for all the things that you have brought us through. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Praise you. We couldn't have done it without him. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We couldn't have made it as far as we have. And we won't make it as far as we will go without him. Amen. Hallelujah. Like a ship without 
place right now, Father God. We welcome you in this place. We call on your name. We call on the Holy Spirit to just fill this entire room, fill this entire building with your presence, Father God. I thank you for that right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
saturated with his spirit's presence and spirit. Amen. 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 Turn around and greet someone and tell them you're glad to see them this morning. So that, is that cable working? Okay. All right. We had um, <laughs> the uh, iPad died and then the, uh, uh, we're not sure if the cable is going to work or not. Uh, Apple's funny. They fix their stuff so if you don't use their stuff, it, it doesn't like to work right all the time. Yeah, there you go. This iPad will self-destruct in five seconds. So, praise the Lord. So, um, we trust you guys are with us out there. Hallelujah out there in the ether world. And uh, we're, we're, we kept recording, but now we're just hoping that you guys are live. So, we will reshare and um, praise the Lord and hope that everybody's with us. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, we're glad to see you. We, we weren't here last week, obviously. Um, about this time, we were breaking the camper down, uh, getting ready to uh, leave. We had um, gone down for Thanksgiving, spent in our camper, and uh, I did a bunch of work on my camper. Um, I had to because it had problems because we hadn't used it almost three years. With, with what Janie had gone through the past couple of years, uh, two and a half years, we just didn't make it down there to use it. And uh, so I, you know, when you let something sit for that long at the beach, there's stuff. And I still have to go back and my water pressurizer died. Which means I can't, I couldn't winterize it. You got to have, you know, that that's dead. So I bought a new one. I got to go back down and replace it and winterize it before it gets really, really cold. And we have a, a deep cold snap. So, but we we were having fun. We had fun. It was good. Saturday morning woke up. It was pouring down rain and just on the top of that camper. Just, I mean, we've, you know, heaven. I'm in heaven. Is it, is, it, is it you're good, Jesse? He's got a short one. If, all right, it's your mama, so you know what that means. It better, it better find its way back to her, or she will send the brute squad after you. Jamie's brute squad is five foot two. Okay, she is the brute squad. All right. Hallelujah. So yeah, we had, we had a good time. We uh we we cooked and had Thanksgiving with Justin Cap because his football he couldn't be there so. Um, and then we took all the leftovers down to the beach and heated it all back up and had Thanksgiving again on, on Thursday this time. It was just as good on Thursday as it was on Wednesday. Hallelujah. Glory to God and made a bunch of turkey salad and scarfed, scarfed, scarfed. It was good. Hallelujah. Hope you all had a great Thanksgiving. Uh, we missed seeing you, but, you know, it was a good time for us to get some downtime. We, we did need it. And uh, so it was a blessing to us. Um, now, there's a couple things going on. Next Saturday is supposed to be our uh, Christmas party until I looked at the weather report for next Saturday. Uh, as of now, they're calling for f three to five inches on Saturday and another one to three Saturday night, which will be four to eight, which you know here, a half inch shuts the world down in Greensboro. Um, half inch, I mean, four to eight shuts it down the world for the world, you know, around here. Anyway, uh, we don't know what's going to happen right now. Um, that, that possibly means we won't have sun, the, the Saturday night thing or Sunday morning service if that much snow comes. If, if that much snow comes, we won't. Okay? They're not going to open up. People aren't going to be out. You won't be out because you'll, you'll have got, you know, gone to the store and got all the bread and the milk and put it in your house, and uh, you've got to guard it from those who didn't. Okay, so um, that is still on as of now. We'll see what happens. 
Uh, that, that could change this afternoon. They could come out this afternoon and say we're going to get six inches of rain. Okay? It could change by the time the end of the service is over. But I'm just letting you know, heads up, um, we just don't know what's going to happen weather-wise in, in regards to next weekend. And, um, uh, of course, all the people who teach in this, this building are hoping it hits Monday. <laughs> you know? And, uh, you know, take, a, take a, a, snow, a snow day or a comp time day and sit home. Anyway, we'll see. Just, can't, just, be, just be aware. If we are not able to have service, then our plan will be to attempt to do Mevo from the house and have church on the Internet, okay, um, which, which we can do uh, as long as we can get Jesse over to the house. Well, I'll just go get my, I'll take my Jeep over there. And it's four by four, and I'll, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll haul them over. <laughs> Amen. What was that? Well, I, I got the trailer hitch. We can sled on the back. My brother, one time, when uh, we had a bunch of snow down in Greenville, which was one of those oddities, but we had a huge snow, like 36 inches, six-inch snow drifts. I mean, six-foot snow drifts. I mean, you, we were shoveling snow the day after the storm. It started snowing on Friday, snow through Sunday, and on Monday we were shoveling snow with shorts, no shirt, and got sunburned because it was 70-some degrees. Oh, yeah. But he was out pulling his truck. He had a truck and put, put snow ski, I mean, uh, uh, water skis, tied a rope to it, was pulling people around on the, on the snow on the back of the truck. No. <laughs> See, the Mo the Mo Okies came from Eastern Carolina. We were there first. Dad Hagen used to say, oh, down in Texas, we got a colloquial saying. He'd say, and I went, we said that in North Carolina. We were here first. It came from North Carolina. We were one of the first colonists. Remember the lost colony? We were the first ones here. Okay. So anyway, I uh, do, do want to announce um, that we're not going to be having service on the 23rd or the 26th. We are having service on the, 20, on the 30th, uh, the New Year's weekend. We'll be having service on that, that Sunday. Okay. So we won't have service on the, 20, on the 23rd or that Wednesday. So before or after Christmas right there. We're not going to have service. We have five Sundays in this month, and we know people travel and people spend time with family and they're going, and it's just you know, and, and then we got to get somebody come out and open. Them. So we just we said let's let's just not have service, and um, we'll still have our four Sundays this month if we don't get something out next weekend. Okay. Now, all that being said, we'll try to go live with Mevo if we don't have service. Also, um, you can if if you're not here and you know you're not going to be here, you miss this week or you miss next week because of snow, and you're missing the following week. Um, we have um, the ability to receive tithing and giving electronically through Square Cash and or PayPal. And so we would encourage you to remember the church is ongoing, even if we're not here, uh, due, to, due to circumstances beyond our control. And it is a blessing for us to be able to continue to function and operate the, the uh, financial side of the ministry, even if we're not able to meet. Okay? So... If you're able to do that, that would be great. Uh, it's easy to, to sign in to Square Cash, isn't it? And if you've got a PayPal account, it's easier to use your PayPal account um, to get you know, to use that. So uh, that information will go up on the screen in the service, but also you can check with Jessica at the church and get that information if you need to sign up for that if you haven't ever done it before. Um, if you don't like doing that, we understand. Um, but, you know, at the same time, if it, if it can help the church and you're able to do it, during missing services. Um, I mean, it's, it's possible that if, you know, we had a snowstorm this next weekend and something happened the following weekend, we wouldn't see you till the first, almost the first of the year. And uh, so that's, that's not good um, because we love seeing you, okay? Um, so that being said, praise the Lord. Now, going from there, uh, Gina, y'all, most of y'all know the Currys. Um, the, the last Sunday night, um, Gina had an event. She did not, her heart stopped beating for 30 minutes. They had her on a mechanical CPR device to uh, be back uh, at, um, after half an hour. Um, you know, they were doing CPR in their home until the rescue squad got there. Then they hooked this device up to her that did the, the pumping um, for, because you just can't do this for half an hour. You just you can't do it. And, um, so they, did, they got a heartbeat back. She woke up Tuesday night. Um, praise the Lord. I went up to the hospital on Monday. Then I went back up on Wednesday. I'm going back up this afternoon. Um, 
they were glad to see me. And, um, you know, you, you, just, you do what you do. Amen? And when people are in need, we, we are there to minister to need. Amen? And so um, be praying for a quick recovery. The things they did in the hospital uh, has caused a short-term memory loss. Um, they, they lower the body temperature down to, um, to as cold as they can get them and to help keep brain damage and organ damage from taking place because of the, because of the, 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 because of the fact of what happened with the heart. And uh, then they bring the body back up, and when afterwards they experience short-term memory loss. Like uh, as of yesterday, the day before, she still didn't know why she was in the hospital. You tell her, she would forget. Okay. And uh, they say that's normal, but we're believing for not normal. We're believing for supernatural. Amen? We believe for supernatural recovery. So, anyway, um, those that knew about it, you know, we wanted you to, be, you know, to get the update. Those that didn't know about it, we wanted you to know what was going on. Uh, we've been there to minister. And, you know, God is good. We're able to minister and um, be effective in ministry and be a blessing uh, because of the anointing of God, because God's good, because God loves his people. Amen. Hallelujah. And I know they're not in our church anymore, but at the same time, uh, they're part of, you know, they, people become part of your family, and they stay part of your family. Um, and we, we, that's how I view it. Uh, no matter what happens with people over the years, when there's a need, I want to be there, you know, as a pastor and a minister. And we minister to life, and life is good. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory, glory to God. So I just want to kind of give you all that update. She is doing well. Um, you know, she was basically dead. And had, Ten years ago, they would have pronounced her dead on arrival, and that would have been it. Okay? They, they wouldn't be, they would have just said that's, you know, you know they would just gone. And then they had done the paddles. They had done the uh, adrenaline in the heart, everything. Um, so... Now, it's time to give. If you need an offering envelope, raise your hand. The ushers will be glad to assist you. If you're giving electronically, you can go ahead and ring that up. Glory to God. Uh, if you're not giving anything, just shout glory, hallelujah, and love on Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you for the tithe and the offering in the name of Jesus. We thank you the people are blessed as they give into the kingdom of God. And thank you, heaven's windows are opened unto them, and you pour out on them blessings they do not have room enough to receive. In Jesus' name, amen. Go ahead and receive that, ushers. And as they're doing so, Jessica's going to come up and, and share some stuff about, um, you know, before we, we, we would set up a box in the lobby and stuff at the church and, um, you know, collect stuff. And because we don't have that uh, facility anymore, uh, we can't do that. So she's come up with a creative idea on how we can still be a blessing. And so listen to Jessica as she shares what to do. kind of took away my opening, but yes, since we don't have our own building anymore, I had to come up with something creative, and so we've worked on something creative that we can do. Um, this year, we're going to do what's called a reverse advent, so I don't know if you're familiar with what an advent calendar is, but it's the 25 days leading up to Christmas. Usually, you get like a little gift out of it for yourself, but we're doing a reverse advent, which is where you're going to put a gift into this basket. You're, each family is going to get a basket. And you put a non-perishable item or a food item for the um, urban ministries. Like we used to give, you know, donations. And you keep this in your own house. And then the last service before Christmas, you bring it to church. And we're going to take it and donate it to urban ministries. So, um, so non-perishables, you just put a canned good or anything like that inside of the basket and then bring it back to us. That Which will be service. the 19th, I guess. Yeah, so the last Sunday or Wednesday before Christmas. 19th is the Wednesday, and I think Sunday's like the 16th or 15th, something like that. Sex 16th. 16th. 16th, okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, no ice cream. Please, no ice cream. <laughs> Eat the um, ice cream while you're putting <laughs> stuff in the basket. And if you want to, you can put toys in there, and we'll find a um, donation place for those as well. So, all right. That's it? That's it. Right. Just see me after service and get one of these. <laughs> well, here I am again, y'all. Everybody smile. That way I don't know you frowning at me. So on next Saturday, if it does not snow, we're having a Christmas celebration and we are taking up money for our pastors like I said week for last he didn't tell me to do this because he probably would tell me don't do this but because I have bought Christmas gifts for my husband and all four of my boys and my two granddaughters and my daughter-in-law 
and my girlfriend that I like, who's been my girlfriend, and for whoever else. So we're not going to have no excuses. Well, I got to buy for my husband or my wife or my mama or my daddy or my kids or my grandkids. All that's good. So we are still taking up the donations uh, for Pastor Janie and Pastor Ed. Also, y'all hear me? I need to get those monies. Uh, you ain't check, money order, cash, cashier's check, uh, your debit card with the PIN number if you don't know how to go get it. You know, however, uh, so let's, you know, let's get that done. And if it's no, then we'll figure out, I guess, the next stage. Thank you. All right. Now, I didn't tell her to do that. Hallelujah. All righty. Praise God. Children's Church Preschool, you guys are dismissed. Okay. Praise Lord. Go ahead and open your Bibles to Galatians, the sixth chapter. And, um. We're going to jump in here. You can jump in feet first, head first. You can do a cannonball. I don't care, but let's get in here. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Galatians chapter 6, starting in verse 7. And it says, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, there shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. He that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Um, word weary to amplify says lose heart. You know, don't lose heart. Okay? Um, let me read this uh, passage out of two different translations combined. Verse 7 and 9 will be out of the Phillips. Verse 8 will be out of the Corny Bear. And uh, I'm just going to read it. Don't be under any illusion. You cannot make a fool of God. A man's harvest in life will depend entirely on what he sows. The man who now sows for his own flesh shall reap therefrom a harvest doomed to perish. But he that sows for the Spirit shall from the Spirit reap the harvest of eternal life. Let us not grow tired of doing good. For unless we throw in our hand, the ultimate harvest is assured. Hallelujah. You know, as believers, we're faced with many temptations. But one of the most prominent temptations for Christians, and I'm going to be honest with you, it's not to go out and get drunk and run around with other women or other men, you know, to do some kind of vice. One of the most prominent and biggest temptations for Christians is quitting. Quitting the race, giving up, getting, getting weary, getting tired. Yielding to the temptation thwarts the development of, your, of the nature and character of Christ within us and ultimately keeps you out of your spiritual harvest. The pressure from Satan comes to make you quit. Even when, when Christians are struggling with sin in their life, and I mean, you know, dealing with, you know, whatever in their life that they shouldn't be doing, when they're dealing with it, the pressure in that is to get them to quit. Satan tempts them to do it, and then comes, puts pressure on them that they're not good for God, need to quit. Because his ultimate goal is to find some way to weasel into your life and to get you to give up. Because if he can't keep you out of the kingdom, he wants you to make you ineffective in the kingdom. Can somebody say, help me, Jesus? Say, help me, Lord. I, hallelujah. Are you here? He wants to keep you from finishing your race. Um, most of the time, when we read this passage of Scripture, and we preach it this way numerous times, um, they see it as relating to reaping and sowing in the realm of good and bad deeds towards others. And that is true. I mean, that's still true. That's still part of the, of the principle there. I don't think it's the main thrust of the Scripture, the main, the main purpose of this passage. The context points towards sowing and reaping spiritual things. And God wants that spiritual state that we're in to be as a direct result of what we sowed yesterday. And if we don't like the spiritual state we're in today, 
He wants us to change the seed we're sowing today so that the spiritual state of tomorrow will be where he wants us to be in. If you don't like where you are, change what you're sowing. Amen? I said, if you don't like where you are, change what you're sowing. If your spiritual state, now, now, listen, now, now I know this, that's kind of simplistic, and I know you can have other factors involved, like you've been sowing, you're waiting on harvest and that kind of stuff. But if things are just, I need, I need that little video clip from the Grinch. You know, that's, that's kind of a cool video clip. You know, we just need to have that up. We can put the Grinch up and, and you know, and flying raspberry everybody there. Okay? But the fact of the matter is that if we're going along and we're quitting instead of staying faithful to the harvest, we're not what God for us. You got to keep. Don't throw in the towel. Don't throw in the towel. Cut it. Cut it. I can see. I can see. I can cut it. I can cut it. Adrian. Anyway. All right, hallelujah. You know, we got, we've got to stay with it until we see the harvest. It's not always easy. When you're, dealing with things, when you're dealing with things that are manifest in the flesh, it's definitely not always easy. Pain, physical symptoms, bank account numbers, Broken down car with no money in the bank. All can speak real loud. But if you're being faithful to the word of God, amen, you don't throw in the hand. You know, Phil, Phil, uh, Philip says don't throw in the hand. Kind of a box term, we throw in the towel. If you don't throw in the towel, if you don't throw in the hand, if you don't give up, you will reap in due season. Your ultimate harvest is assured. Amen? Your ultimate harvest is assured. We want you to see your harvest. Amen? Glory to God. Uh, Deuteronomy. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 30. Remember that the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. We interpret in light of the New, but there's still good stuff in the Old Testament to read in, in, in light of New Testament revelation. Amen? There's a lot of good stuff written. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that the, old, that the stuff was written about Israel as an example to us. King James uses the word in sample uh, twice, and that's one of those places. Looking at Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 15. Um, I tell you what, let's back up to verse 10. Y'all mind back up to verse 10? Good, because I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes, which are written in this book of the law, and if thou turn unto the Lord thy God with all thy heart <clears throat> and with all thy soul, for this commandment which I commanded this day is not hidden from thee, neither is it far off. It is not in heaven that thou shalt say, Who shall go into heaven for us to heaven and bring it unto us that we may hear and do it? Neither is it beyond the sea that thou shalt say, Who shall go over the sea and bring it to us that we may hear and do it? But thy word is nigh thee in thy mouth and in thy heart that thou mayest do it. Does that sound like anything in the New Testament? And Paul adds on to that, That is the word of faith which we preach. That's where it came from. He, had, he, 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 he gives the revelation. He gives the revelation of what that word is, the word of faith, the word that comes from God. Amen? Hallelujah. So, but the word is nigh thee, unto thee, in thy mouth, and in thy heart, that thou mayest do with it. Then, then, God, then God, uh, Deuteronomy goes on and says, See, look, pay attention. I have set before thee this day life and good, death and evil. Now, listen, we have, we have choices set before us. We have a room at school called Choices. And let me just tell you, when you end up in there, it's because of a bad choice. Okay? 
You know, you, you could call it all kinds of things. You could call it the holding tank. You could call, they call it choices because you made a bad choice. Okay? We have constantly in life, we have set before us choices. Whether to do right this way or that way. To do right or to do wrong. It's before you all the time. You know, I remember a number of years ago, some of y'all remember the old Pace membership warehouse. That was here long before Sam's was. And, um, you know, I loved going to Pace. And um, I, um, I, I have, um, let me see, where is it? This is a storage unit. Because I, uh, I, I had them at the house. But, you know, they're, um, they were for the church. I had an office at the house when we first moved here because we didn't have an office. And so we bought this and, uh, for a bookcase. And it was a three-piece bookcase set. And uh, it came, somehow or another, came in two boxes. And it was expensive. I mean, you know, back then it was about $300 for the whole thing. And, um, you know, um, so we, um, we, no, actually, I'm sorry. It wasn't that. It was in my entertainment center that we bought. That it's in the mountain cabin now. That's what it was. But it was like, and so when they rung it up, that because it was two-part, they had set it up in their system that you had to ring up both boxes to get the full price. Because but when the cashier looked at it and said one of two and two of two, they just rang up one. And it came up like $180 or something, you know, about half price. We thought, man, this thing was on sale. You know? And we had all this stuff. So we got home and we, we were looking at it and going, looking, we went, we were going over the receipt, you know, checking everything. And then it, 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 did, it said one of one, you know, one of two was this. We thought, uh, oh, they didn't do something right. Now, what would most people do? I got blessed. See, yeah, the Lord calls him not to ring up the other half. God, be a blessing. Yeah, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. We got in the car and took the receipt and went back and found the manager and told him what happened. I said, we, came, we, we realized that, that they didn't do something right. He, said, he started looking at me, you're right. He said, you actually came back here? I said, yeah. He starts going out to his employees. You're not going to believe this. I said, our integrity won't let us do this. We have to pay for this. He was in shock. And see, you know, I had a choice to make. Get blessed by my own devious hand. Because that's what it would have been. At that point, when I became aware of it, it would have been devious on my part to bless me with that blessing. I, mean, I know people have gone out and testified. I know people, I've seen people do stuff like go out and testify about stuff like that. Say, the Lord gave me this at half price. No, he didn't. That employee made a mistake. It cost them their job if it didn't get corrected. Are you here? So we went back and paid for it. I feel a whole lot better. My pocketbook didn't feel any better, but I felt a lot better. But I was planning on paying that price for it anyway. You know? You know? I mean, of course my, pocket, my, my, my bank account would have loved to have the extra 180 in it. But it wouldn't have been worth the price in the long run for that 180 because that 180 could have cost me lots of money. That's right. You open the door up to the thief. Right? I've set before thee life and death and good and evil. In that I command unto thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes and his judgments. What? What happens when you keep his statutes and judgments? That thou mayest live and multiply, and the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. But if you turn your heart away so that thou wilt not hear, but shall be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish, and ye shall not prolong your days upon the land, whether thou goest over Jordan to possess it. I call heaven and worth to record against you this day. I've set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Now stop. Now God gives you a choice and then goes, hey, dummy, choose life. Just in case you can't figure it out, I set before you life and death, blessing and cursing, therefore choose life. In case it's this, this and, and let me, I'll be honest with you, we're living in an era that people kind of struggle with, you know, they don't struggle, they go, 
what is right and what is wrong. What is a blessing and what is a curse? Like, you idiot. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. I'll say something in French to a vet. Très bête. Uh, bet is stupid in French. To a bet is you are stupid. Okay? But it just sounds better in French. Uh, even if you say idiot. And, and, and en français, it just sounds better. You know? I call heaven and earth to record you. I've set before you. God says there's blessing and cursing set before you. Life and death set before you. Hey! Hey! Choose life. There's a million dollars and there's nothing. Hello? God has set it up so we can choose which place to live. Now, listen what happens when you choose life. That both thou and thy seed may live. That thou mayest love the Lord thy God, that thou mayest obey his voice, that thou mayest cleave unto him. For he is thy life and the length of days. That thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob to give them. That immediately qualifies you, and no matter what anybody says, you get people come up with this, that was for the Jews. If you be Christ, then you're Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. Amen? That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through faith. Amen? That he swear to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob. The blessing of Abraham. God says, choose life. Choose to make the choices that he, he's put before you that are life, that are blessing. There are going to be times that choosing what God says doesn't look like the best or the easiest or the most profitable. My, I remember growing up, and there was a man in the church, and the church we were in, he was a car salesman. <clears throat> and he, he flat out said, uh, sitting around with a bunch of people, because, you know, nice guy. You know, we go to church. He said, I can't be a Christian. I'm a car salesman. <laughs> That's right. If I'm sitting at the table with him, I'm thinking, I ain't buying a car from you. <laughs> you just told me you can't be a Christian because you're a car salesman, implying that you're so dirty and underhanded, you can't, you can't serve God and do what you're doing. After we, after we turn the odometer back. That's right. You know? Cars never had a, never had a drop of water on the inside. May have had 40 gallons of water on the inside, but not a drop. You know? You know, it's, it, we, we didn't, we, we salvaged it out of a pond, cleaned it up, you know? One week without Jeff, and I'm, 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 I'm having to get back into it here. God says, choose the life that you and your seed may live. And that you, listen, why? So that you can love him. Amen. You can, you can obey his voice. You can cleave to him. Why? Because we love him, we obey him. We cleave to him. He is our life. He is the length of our days. And he will cause us to dwell in the blessing of Abraham. God wants us to live in the blessing of Abraham. Can you say amen? amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. This passage, and this eliminates the supposition that we are where we are because of some predestinated sovereign act of God for our life. God didn't plan, God didn't establish to you to be where you are, like you are, right this second. God has an end result. He wants for you. He's, he's planned for a certain end result, which is blessing. But you can mess that up along the way. Or you can enhance that along the way. Amen? 
I've been going through something. That wasn't because God determined way, for, way, way in advance that you were going to go through that. Like, there's a devil out there, folks. There's an enemy out there. He don't like you. Okay? I mean, God could sing, you know, that old, that old um, uh, I forgot the name of the artist right now. It kind of went blank. He don't love you like I love you. Because if he did, he wouldn't break your heart. Jerry Butler. All right, I, th I thought it would come to me. The devil don't love you. God loves you. But the devil will tell you he's going to do all this stuff for you because he wants to destroy you. Amen? He wants to take you down. He wants to sink you. He wants to make you go under. But he wants to do it in the way that you think he's, he's doing. By doing it this way, I'm going to get ahead. I'm going to have blessings. I'm going to be good. I'm going to be rich. Don't forget we brought nothing into this world, and it's certain we can't carry anything out. You can accumulate mass amounts of wealth here on the planet. It ain't going with you when you leave. Now, that's not to say it's, not, it's wrong to have wealth. That's to say you can't live See, because when you live, for, when you're greedy for filthy lucre, when the love of money operates in your life, you'll do things that are shortcuts to get there. You'll cheat, lie, steal, kill, borrow. You'll do whatever it takes to get there. If you set <coughs> a certain earthly lifestyle as your goal, instead of loving God and cleaving to him, and letting him be your life. Even in the charismatic, listen, folks, Dad Hagen wrote the book, The Midas Touch, because the prosperity message of the charismatic church got out of balance. There's people who don't like that. They rejected that message. But he was trying to bring balance back because people were getting to where <clears throat> they were greedy for filthy lucre. All they care, and they would be, then they, see, and when you get that way, you can get manipulated. Preacher come in and say, you give to me, you're going to have a thousandfold return. Preacher got in service one day and said, I got a thousandfold anointing on me now. Come on up here and give. Hello? And people are all caught up because, because of what? They're not loving God. They're not cleaving to God. They're not letting him be their life. They're not seeing the end result of letting him prosper you, letting him bless you, letting him bring you into the land of, of plenty. Amen? Having length of days and walking in the land of blessing. What, now, I don't, I don't know if this is still an accurate uh, uh, figure today, but about uh, 20 years ago, Van, um, uh, Van Krause was with me here at the church. Here We were out eating. He was talking. And uh, at that time, he was a chaplain for the Chicago um, uh, Bears and Cubs baseball team, football team, and a scout for the Dallas Cowboys, okay? And a, a, a top uh, a Fortune 500, top 100 company uh, motivational speaker and Christian, you know, he, he, he preached and stuff. Um, he said, and he started talking about the, 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 uh, the, mo the about 85% of Basketball players, people who go pro as a basketball player, retire bankrupt. Because they came out of the hood, they came out of the ghettos, they, they, had, they could play ball, they signed a huge contract, had an agent who sucked them dry, let them ha have any kind of lifestyle they wanted all along, and all they did was elevate the way they spent money to match the amount of money they had. So before, you know, it's kind of like this. You take somebody and, and you know, who's, who's um, buying street drugs and all this kind of stuff, you know, and robbing banks or whatever to get money to buy street drugs and, and give them two or three or when they win the lottery and get five or six million dollars, they'll be in the same boat because they'll just be buying designer drugs. They'll elevate the way they spend. And it was because, because 
the focus of what they thought was going to be blessing to the life or give them happiness was the material possessions. And we brought that into the church. And it became, Christians got stupid. We had Christians going out and, you know, leasing Mercedes Benz at payments they couldn't afford in order to look prosperous. So they could tell everybody, this is my prosperity car. No, it's your, it's your lease car, and you can't even buy groceries to put on the table because you got a $699 a month car lease payment because you're driving a Mercedes. Hello? They're going out and getting hand-tailored suits and, you know, spending $1,500, $2,000 for a suit. Hello? And they can't put food on the table because they thought it made them look prosperous. It made them look like they could run with the prosperity crowd in the church. And then preachers were bragging about their, how much their guard dog cost. You $25,000 guard dog. And I got a five-car garage. And, you know, I got a, this million, much, so much million-dollar house and all this kind of stuff. Because you're going around preaching that if you give to the preacher, you're going to have the supernatural money come to you. And all the while, you're piling money into their pockets. And we shift the focus from what happens when you love God. And you cleave to God. Because God said if you'll love him and cleave to him, he'll bring you into the land of blessing. He'll bring you into the land of the covenant, the land of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But it was the land of I'll bless you and bless you and multiply and multiply you. Amen. And so, <laughs> how did I get off on that? <clears throat> he said he wants us to love him, cleave unto him, obey his voice. And he'll be your life. We have lost the understanding that intimacy with God is success. We think success is the, is the car, the house, the possessions. When it's being possessed, not by devils. It's being owned by God, spirit, soul, and body, walking with him, loving him because he's your life. You're cleaving to him, and then he just gives you length of days and brings you into the land of blessing. You don't serve God to get blessed. He will bless you. He will prosper you. He will sustain you. But when our, our heart shifts and we're, what our, our seed sown <clears throat> and our attitude is that this thing is a determining factor that I have arrived in the blessings We've missed it. Hello? There's been a lot of money in the church spent, not given, spent trying to buy the success that only comes from intimacy with God. And a lot of that money was misdirected from its purpose To reach the nations with the truth. Hello. We have to come back to the, the genuineness. And I'll be honest with you, our, our charismatic word of faith circles are, are somewhat floundering right now because we missed it in that arena. They didn't listen to the correction. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to, kind of, I'm going to have to close here because I've I got to get back next week into where I wanted to go with this. But, you know, I have to follow the Holy Ghost. Okay? I have to follow him. 
And when he goes somewhere, I go with him. And I went laying in bed this morning thinking about going this way. Shocker. Back in 19, I think it was 99, 98, 99, 2000, right around that era when he wrote, he had the book, um, The Midas Touch, come out. Actually, it came out a year late. The book was written the year before. It was supposed to be released at camp meeting the year before. But in June of that year, he had a meeting. He called it Top Summit. Called in all the guys in the country preaching prosperity. Got them all at the big conference table. Had a stack of notebooks sitting beside him. Opened up the meeting. And then reached over and began to say, fellas, you're not preaching anything new. He said, they did this back in the 50s, preaching exactly what you're preaching. He said, I got the notes, Pat, the note. I got the notes right here. He said, and they got into error, and it killed the move of God. He said, I'm determined not to let that happen again. The problem was, people got mad in the meeting. One guy went out and said he thought he had gone senile. Then came out later and tried to back up and say he was only joking. You don't joke about things like that. One of, the, one of the guys running around the circles preaching prosperity said the Lord told him not to go. It hurt his faith. He had to stand in the podiums and the pulpits and on the stages and go, y'all know who my spiritual father is. He built his ministry saying he was a brother Hagen and then turning around and refused to go hear what dad had to say. That, he, said, he said, I'm determined not to let this excess in the message of prosperity kill the move of God. They didn't listen, and it, it messed stuff up. Whenever we get our focus off of the Lord and get it on possessions, we've missed it. And see, here's the problem. There's all this truth in the message of biblical prosperity. There's so much. God wants to bless you. God wants to prosper you. God wants you to be blessed so you can be a blessing. God want, wants you to have nice things. God wants to do all that for you. It's all true. But when the hardship goes to that is where we get in trouble. Because then what? We'll start taking shortcuts to get there and then blame it on God. So preachers start standing up and saying things like, there's a special anointing on me tonight. If you'll give, uh, give me your money, you're going to get a supernatural debt cancellation. And people all run up there and empty their pockets. And what they end up with is empty pockets. I was in a meeting, and people were getting up and walking up and throwing money on the platform. And, you know, and, and that was the whole thing. Everybody was doing it. Everybody did it. Every preacher did it. They were all doing it. Everybody was doing it came out the next meeting, and one of the preachers came out with a windsuit on with a with an um, elastic bottom to the coat. So when people started shoving money and throwing money all down inside of his coat, it didn't fall on the floor. It, it not, it, I'll be honest with you, and I, I love this guy. I love this ministry. His ministry has blessed me numerous times in my life, but that moment, I was sickened. I said I was sickened what I, by what I saw. Now, I trust God. They repent and get things straight. But we, when we get off on these things, and it's all because we don't, we're not doing this. We're not loving the Lord thy God with all your heart and soul. We're not cleaving to him. Are you here? We're not obeying him. We do because we're going to get rich. We, our focus has shifted. Don't let the devil come sit on you. If you do what he says, you're not going to get anything. You're going to be poor. Because he said right here, that thou mayest love the Lord thy God, that thou mayest obey his voice, that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life and the length of thy days, that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob. What was the land of Abraham? The land of plenty and overflow. That's what God wants to bring you, but you can't shortcut getting there. The way you sow, what you sow, so the harvest in life depends on what you sow. If you sow heart toward God, obeying God and cleaving to God, 
you're going to reap the blessings of God. You don't do it to get the blessings. You do it because you love him. He just says, if you do this, I'll do this. Amen. This, this is all about um, heart attitude. So I can come back next week and preach prosperity ministries, preach exactly what we've always preached. You give, you tithe, you do this, God's going to do this, because he is. But you've got to have things like this underlying it that say heart attitude has to be right. The heart has to be right toward God. The heart has to pursue God. We've got to become like Job, not, that, not in that we say unbelief. <clears throat> but though he slay me, I will serve him. I'm not a fair-weather servant. I'm not a fair-weather Christian. I'm only going to show up and tell God I love him when things are good. I've watched ministries over the years. And I've seen ministries over the years that have um, talked about how that they're, they're super faith and all this kind of stuff while everything is good. And close the doors and pack up and leave town when things go bad. Because it was easy to obey God when it was easy. I know that was deep, wasn't it? Ooh, that was a fill of cost. I mean, that, that's worthy of a Facebook meme. It's easy to serve God when it's easy. When there's enough money. When you got 300, 400 people in the church, and they're all knocking themselves down to come wash your car and to cut your grass and to paint your house and to, you know, iron your clothes and to, you know, put money in your bank account as the pastor and to, you know, take you out to dinner to the Ruth's Chris three times a week and all that stuff. It is easy. But what happens when they're out, you know, when you stand up and make a statement Except you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no part of me. And from that moment, many went back and followed him no more. And he turned to the 12. He said, will you leave me also? He lost the whole team. The whole crowd. Had a church exodus. It wasn't a split. It was an absolute exodus. Everything he had done up to that point was gone because he only had the first 12 he picked in the first place. It's easy to serve God when it's easy. It's easy to be faithful when it's easy. It's easy to speak words of faith when everything's hunky-dory and going good. But when you understand that when you love God and you obey God and you cleave to God, you're to do that when it's easy, when it's not easy, when it's difficult, when it looks like you're going under. Live or die, sink or swim, go over, go under. And it looks like you're going to do all of them. Simultaneously and continuously. Can you serve God? Can you love God? Can you cleave to God? Can you obey God? Because if you will, he's your life. He'll bring you into the land of your fathers. And our forefather is Abraham, spiritually speaking. According to Galatians, if you be Christ under Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. When we have that kind of attitude, and we're sowing into the things of God, sowing into spiritual things, God will bless you. God will honor you. His face and his favor will be upon you. Amen? Father, we thank you for our time together. We honor you. We honor you in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you for the opportunity to come together and to 
join ourselves together as the family of God and hear the, what the Spirit has to say to the church. Let us correct our hearts. Let us love you, obey you, cleave to you. Because you're our life. And the fullness of your life in us raises us, sets us in high places. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We sure love you. Those who are joining us today, God bless you. Thank you for being with us. Hallelujah. And um, old Parker buddy there, high school friend. Hallelujah. Billy, how you doing, buddy? Glory to God. Amen. Jesus is Lord. He loves you. Amen. Praise God. Till next time, remember this. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. We love you. God bless you. See you next time here at Faith and Victory Church. Walk with God. Love him. Obey him and cleave to him, for he is your life in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.